Today on Rachel Ray. Oh my God, someone took the garbage bowl. I'm lost. Ah! Who says you can't go home again? I'm so happy I'm here. <laughs> Rach is back in the Big Apple with a brand new set. Oh, that smells good. Did you hear me? I sound like Cookie Monster. That smells good. And we're throwing a housewarming party over 18 months in the making. Packed with great food. Delicious. Big surprises. <laughs> and a whole lot of fun. The avocado is saying, hey, baby, what's going on? This is like a party. And I'm going to call this the Rachel Ray. Yeah. special big day for us here in New York City at my home away from home that our team has turned into something that looks just like my home kind of a cabin in the city here this is our very first show back in studio in 20 months team here, Delancey and all of our friends here at the show have turned this into what really feels like the Adirondacks. There's beautiful beam work everywhere and this looks like everybody's visiting at my house because they're all sitting in cushy sofas in love seats. Yes. hybrid uh, season this year. We're doing, um, as you guys know, some shows from home while we're working on rebuilding our actual home that burned down last year during the pandemic. Um, so we're going to keep an eye on that and keep showing you guys our progress there. And we're also going to spend some time here in New York City. Um, and it's just so fun to have both of those worlds together again and to have people actually with us again. Again, it's our very first studio audience, so welcome to everyone. to have my cup of tea. I always have a cup of tea in my hand because we keep it so cold here in the studio. It's so cozy to have tea back in my life. Mm. Oh. Unfortunately, I also had a gigantic, like a quart of coffee this morning. They make it a little stronger here than my husband makes it at home. So I might have the shakes with the tea, which would be really funny for you guys because it'll just go like this kind of everywhere. Um, we're going to start We're gonna start off today. It's, it's going to be taco night because tacos make me feel like a party, and today is kind of a party for me. There's going to be a couple of surprises in the party. Uh, our producers have booked two surprise uh, housewarming guests for me. Don't know who they are, so I can't really tell you about that. Later, we are going to catch up with my friend Jose Andres, though. He has a brand new initiative he's going to tell us all about. And he's also going to open his fridge and make a mystery meal for us, which is always delightful. Uh, but the tacos we're making today are tacos with picadillo, or tacos with peppers and onions. Normally, it's a little bit of a sweet filling that's tomato-y. Uh, we're going to make a chile verde. It's always up on the Today's Special Board, which remains in our studio. So if you want a sneak peek any day in our show, if I don't start off with the meal, it's right there. It's always right there for you on the Today's Special Board. I'm going to serve this meal up with some um, refried black beans. I have them staying warm. I chose hard shell tacos for tonight because they're fun. And I put them in these little taco holders and I'm getting the oven nice and hot to toast them up. For, we're going to start out, actually, with the salsa that is the main flavor compo component in the dish. I'm going to brown uh, one and a half pounds total, a combo of beef and pork. We're going to put potatoes in with that. But the flavor element here is, of course, the salsa verde. Now, you can use this recipe and just use it for chips. So, uh, yum, any day of the week. But here, we're going to add it to the potatoes and the meat, and that will be our taco filling. So... 
We take uh, a little sheet tray. I usually line it with a piece of foil just for easy cleanup. And you put uh, two small or one large onion cut into wedges on here, a few tomatillos, and some uh, garlic loosened from their jackets. Just crack the jacket. And then once it's all charred up, you rest the peppers. I chose two large poblano peppers. Rest them in a bowl. Cover the bowl so that the skins loosen up away from the flesh. I keep one pepper on the side because I want some texture in the taco filling. So I'm going to just coarsely chop that or put it into thin strips and add it. If I was just making the salsa, I would add both peppers to the salsa itself. Uh, we're going to throw in our tomatillos, our onions, our garlic. It's very quiet in here. <laughs> it made me feel really uncomfortable. I'm like, well, apparently I'm bombing with this audience. Might as well call it a day here. Um, and then I put in a handful of flat leaf parsley and cilantro. If you love cilantro, of course, just use all cilantro. I find people are really volatile about it. They either love it or they hate it. So I, I kind of cut it with the flat leaf parsley, makes it a little more grassy. And I wanted this to have a kind of a bit of a uh, Spanish vibe rather than just a straight up Mexican vibe. So I'm going to add a splash of really good sherry vinegar. Or you can go classic and just do the juice of one lime. I'm going to add a little sprinkle of cumin. And a little salt and pepper. Over the shoulder for luck. A little pepper. What the heck? And, oh, this is going to be fun. This is their food processor, and I often don't remember how to turn it on. <laughs> Ooh, yay! Woo! I love your support of my ability to turn on a machine with literally one button. <laughs> So that's done now, and we're going to just add it to that. And we got to get the potatoes going first in the pan. So what we're going to do is take a large russet potato. I was kind of in the middle of doing that just as we started the show today. Run your knife through it, dice it, and you're kind of making hash browns here, basically. Throw our little potato cubes in there and let them start to get crispy and crunchy at the edges. And then we're going to add... Uh, the meat. Now you can use ground turkey or all ground beef. I'm choosing a combo of beef and pork. Let's get this in the pan. Large non-stick skillet. You want room to be able to brown and crumble the meat once the potatoes get going. It's just a potato. <laughs> now you're just being easy, right? Now you're just like, ooh, potato. <sighs> I'm going to be so spoiled at the end of this month that we're doing here in the city because when I do anything at home, I mean, it's just John there on the other side of the camera. John is not going, ooh. Whoa! Yay, you! <laughs> my head's gonna be so swollen, I would get in the door of my apartment tonight. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know, I'm throwing in the, the coarsely chopped peppers as well. So, you know, the apartment in the city, I don't know, it was in the news and stuff, you guys probably saw it. I, it flooded three times in one year. I don't know why I'm laughing about that. It's horrible. But the apartment smells so bad like mold now because we haven't, you know, fixed everything yet <laughs> that I have candles burning everywhere. So my husband comes in last night and he's like, it looks like some sort of altar in here, man. You have to, you got to calm 
calm it down. Like, we'll just have to live with the aroma because all of the candles are like fighting each other because they're all different scents. <laughs> I'm so happy I'm here. <laughs> potatoes brown and we'll get the meat browning uh, as well when we come back we'll season it up and add our salsa right up this. next rachel why why am i drooling into my own dinner plate no matter the question the answer is this old school irresistible veal parm and spaghetti Yay! Then, we find this hot bench judge guilty of being delicious. But the dog gets a sense that something's happening. He doesn't go for the food. He, he goes, goes for the his groin. Oh, he literally sacked the courtyard. He did. <laughs> and why not some hot honey? Hot honey? Ooh, honey, we've got the hottest new thing in chicken wings. Rachel. Hey guys, welcome back. So now we are moving on to seasoning our Chile Verde Tacos de Picadillo. We're making hard shell tacos, which I'm going to warm up in the oven. And, well, I'll, I'll wait one minute. Um, and I just started to season the combination of ground pork and ground beef that I added to our brown uh, potatoes. I diced one large or two medium russet potatoes. I browned them just in olive oil with salt and pepper. I just added a third of a palmful of smoky cumin. And now I'm adding mild ancho chili powder, about a half a palm, and about the same of pimenton or smoked sweet paprika. Give that a little stir. And then we're going to take our star, our salsa verde, and add that to our meat and potato mixture. Oh, that smells good. Did you hear me? I sound like Cookie Monster. That smells good. That smells good. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Clearly, I haven't been in public in a long time. <laughs> uh, this is our first day, if you're just joining us, back in studio with a live audience. They are couch potatoing it in our new studio with, this is a, a shameless plug for my own furniture, filled with our beautiful furniture. <laughs> uh, okay, so these guys are done. As I said, you can get this recipe online, it's very simple. These are just refried canned black beans. I cook the black beans with jalapeno and onion and garlic. I zhuzh them up in the food processor with a little spice and then throw them back in the pan. Now I'm going to turn them up a little bit so they get a little crispy at the edges. But I've never used this stove, so that's a fun trick too. <laughs> this stove just came yesterday. I know! It took me two years just to figure out how to use the one I got in the cabin. <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna warm up our tacos so they get nice and toasty and kind of a nutty uh, flavor to them. And aren't these cute? I love these little taco racks. They're cheap and cheerful. I bought them online. Um, and th they just are adorable. It's a great way to serve them as well. I'm gonna pop these guys into the brand new oven that will never be that clean again. <laughs> uh, and I'm gonna turn the meat mixture down to low. I think that's low. We'll find out. Um, and the beans are starting to bubble up, so just stay back a little bit. Obviously, I don't want to put the lid on. I'm trying to crisp them up the edges. Let me see if I can turn him down lower. There we go. Just keep him in a little bubble. Now, for the crunchy topping, you can use red cabbage or green cabbage, or I like flat kale um, with this dish. Uh, to stem the kale, you just kind of hold it like a cat's paw and pull it away from the stems. 
Oh my God, someone took the garbage bowl. I'm lost. <laughs> Oh, there's extra back here. Come to your mama, baby. That was a close one. Okay, now we're going to take the uh, stemmed kale or a half a cabbage, one bunch of kale or a half of a small cabbage. Run our knife through it nice and thin. And then hit it with some lime juice. If the lime feels like it's not gonna give you any juice, throw it in the microwave for about 10, 15 seconds on high and you'll get more juice out of it. Which you can then use for margaritas. <laughs> oh my God, I want a margarita so bad now. See, the fun thing about working at home for, for like, 20 months, almost two years, is John loves to make cocktails. And he's often in the show making cocktails. I know. Okay, so lots of lime juice, a little salt and pepper on our greens so they start to break down for us. And then the toppings for this, you can either line the taco shells with shredded jack or pepper jack or cheddar or a combo and let it melt into the taco, which is, it's actually a really nice method because it helps keep the moisture in the taco so it doesn't sog out on the bottom. Uh, but today I wanted to go with, uh, my favorite on these is just crumbled queso fresco or asadero cheese, and a little squish of crema or sour cream that I mix up with lime and cumin, and pickled jalapeno peppers. You can do mild or hot. I like hot, of course. Um, and that's it. We're gonna take a quick break while the tacos toast. We'll be right back. tacos de picadillo. It is taco night, and this is a combo of salsa verde cooked into potatoes with some uh, pieces of, uh, I left for texture, some big pieces of, of poblano pepper, and a combo of beef and pork together. Uh, we have pimenton and cumin in there, uh, and of course our salsa verde, and a little chili powder, but it's a mild chili powder. I used uh, ground ancho chili. And I'm just filling our tacos. See, I got them nice and toasty and lightly golden brown. It really enriches their flavor. And then you could put cheese in the oven with the tacos and it makes a kind of a sealant on the bottom if you wanted to do shredded cheese. But I love, love um, on these tacos to use queso fresco or asadero. So I'm gonna put a lot of crumbled cheese on top of mine. I know, it's good. <laughs> and then we're gonna take a little bit of our shredded, crunchy cabbage and or kale. You know, that, that will negate you feeling bad about eating a lot of beef and pork. <laughs> you have something green on top, that counts. <laughs> it just cancels each other out, really. There's no calories whatsoever in these tacos. And then some of our pickled jalapeno peppers. Cross that. Adorable. And then our refried black beans. Ooh, they're just getting that nice, they're getting that nice crust. I love that when you get that nice crust all around the edges. Delicious. Oh my God, I don't think I can talk to you guys anymore. <laughs> this smells so good, I lost my words. Um, well, it's time to go to break anyway, and our, our team here is excited because uh, my first of two mystery housewarming guests is coming up next. There you go. with a 
live in studio audience. They're all cozying up on some wood. Our producers wanted this to be, uh, you know, a day full of surprises for me, including my first guest. We have two guests in the show. I have no idea who either one of them is, um, uh, but happy housewarming to me. Come on out, whoever you are. I brought Jean you. Jean the greatest living chef on yeah, the planet Earth is with us something. today in studio. What did you yes. bring? Can Pour I, can it. I open yeah. it? No, yeah, pull on this. Pull on this. Oh! oh. Let me, oh. let me think of you. It's free spirit, it's happy. It's free so spirit. beautiful. It's Nothing so yet. beautiful. Oh, Jacques, what a beautiful gift. Okay. Thank you so much, oh, my you're love. You're welcome. With How my are pleasure. You? I am great, and you've been working in, okay. in Italy, <laughs> yes. here. Too. And, and here, too. Uh, yes, hi, everybody. <laughs> it's the first time that I don't cook, you know. Uh, it's the very first time you've ever been here. The first day I met Jacques, I was so nervous to knock on his door. I knew he was coming that day. <laughs> I was so scared to knock on his door. I was so excited to meet him. So I knock on his door, my hands are all sweaty, and I go to push the handle down, and my hands slide. <laughs> so I kind of lean in. The door opens, and Jacques is on the sofa scratching his dog's belly and drinking a glass of red wine at like 10 o'clock. <laughs> and I'm like, that's my hero. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So Jacques, how are things with the foundation? We were all supposed to get together for Jacques' foundation, yes, yes. but because of COVID, the, the event got uh, delayed. So, how so is it, it's doing well. I mean, we're doing something on the internet and so forth and raising money. As you know, you've been part of it. Mm. We have all of those uh, chefs who are teaching People, we are teaching people at the foundation on the, you know, those community kitchen where uh, people we are teaching them how to get back into the world of cooking. A lot of people coming out of jail or homeless people or a former drug addict, we're trying to train them again to get back into the world of cooking and we need a lot of those today. So, and, and, it, and it helps the person. Yeah. You know, when, when you move into this field, as anyone who works in, in kitchens can, can tell you firsthand, it's a, it's a, a self-esteem builder for that human yes. being as yes, well. Yes. Not only are they then helping exactly. the world and have a job, yeah. but yeah. it's a real self-esteem boost. Yeah, and a great deal of love in the kitchen. You know, you cannot cook indifferently. You know, you have yeah. to cook with, with passion, you know, so uh, it's good. They just held up a huge card that says no hugs. <laughs> oh. I swear. I'm double vaccinated. Yeah, me eight. too. I've been <laughs> double vaccinated. And I've been tested in the last 48 yes, hours. I too. got tested last night. Uh, yeah. But I have to remember that. Hands off. It's so oh. hard because I've missed people for so long. But I'll try and remember. I love That's you, Jacques. Right. I love you too. I love your painting. Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you for being a part of our new home. Thank you. Oh, Thank you very much. We're very excited to catch up. It's hard to catch up with Jose, with uh, Chef Jose Andres. Of course, he is always on the front lines of those in need all over the world. His incredible organization, World Central Kitchen, is one of my foundation's largest partners. Um, please welcome back to our show the one and only Chef Jose to see you. Uh, uh, when are we going to get in the same room together, though, right? <laughs> yeah, 
it's gonna be very soon. It's gonna be very soon. But uh, you're my sister. I always have you close to my heart, and I thank you for all the support that you don't only show to World Central Kitchen, but to so many coaches. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, Jose. Uh, and I know so many people in Jose's family and Jose's world, and I, I worry about all of them. I'm, I break my thumbs texting them because they're always on the front lines of the next, you know, disaster. Where are you today or where have you just returned from? Well, today I am in my house in beautiful Bethesda, Maryland. Mm -hmm. But uh, you just came back from uh, a beautiful I island. Um, La Palma, they mm. call it La Isla Bonita, the beautiful island. The beautiful island. And I'm for the beautiful island. And I'm inviting everybody to visit that beautiful island because a volcano exploded uh, over uh, 10, 11 days ago. It's a brand new baby volcano. And unfortunately, so far, more than 1,000 homes uh, and the number keeps growing has been lost to the lava. Many families lost their home. So I went there with World Central Kitchen to help uh, feed the, the emergency services and all the people that so far they are going to mayhem. The good thing is that the people of La Palma, like very much, uh, they have so much empathy. Everybody is opening their homes to everybody. Everybody has a home, a place to go through these very uncertain times. Let's hope this volcano will stop that that island can be back again to what they are, a beautiful place that welcomes everyone. So anybody's planning a vacation, people of America, La Palma in the Canary Islands will be the place. If we all show up, it'll be a great way for tourism to and their showing economy. up that we will help them. And what yep. a beautiful example of caring for one's neighbor. Really beautiful. I know that you're working on a brand new uh, food campaign to end food waste. Can you tell everyone, share with everyone what that program is about and how it's structured, how it works? This has been a great uh, partnership I've, uh, I've established with uh, Hellman's uh, Mayonnaise. And I think it's great because what we want to do together is to be supporting the UN uh, development goal, the United Nations development goals for the year 2030. And one of them is making sure we together fight food waste. And how we do this? Fridge hunting. What fridge hunting is? Well, Rachel, you know it. I'm taking you to my fridge right now. Yeah. Uh, I've been hired as a cameraman. I've been hired as a cameraman. <laughs> uh, I, I hope I'm not fired. And then you open the fridge. And what do you have? It's a lot of stuff that is being totally misused. So <laughs> to get this tomato leftover that always ends in the garbage, this tuna can, I have some beans, I have a little piece of uh, egg that my daughters always leave untouched. I have half a avocado that is kind of how we rotten, but beautiful. And I'm gonna bring some mayonnaise. Look at, now we come to the kitchen. And this is what we do. Come with me. Oh my God, I'm doing camera. I'm carrying food all at the same time. I'm here. And now, let's see if the camera doesn't break apart. I'm going to take my time to put the camera in its place. Oh my God, I've been hired as a cameraman. I told you, oh, it's yeah, so almost. mostly entertaining when he just busts out in almost whatever. Perfect. So, I'm forgetting the mayonnaise. And now this is what we're going to do, right? What I'm telling everybody is what you've been doing all your time on TV, Rachel. That's why we love you. You show everyday people, including me, that we should not be afraid of cooking, that we should be able to go in the kitchen and feel like we can be the best. Just have fun, yes. And to never waste. If something doesn't go as you want, you know what you do? You change the name of the recipe. So take a look what I have over here. I have some mayo, some mayonnaise. I have this beautiful plate right here. I'm gonna be putting oh, the mayo cool. in the bottom of the plate. I'm gonna make a base of the mayo, simple like that. This mayonnaise is covering the bottom. I use chop these tomatoes in little pieces like if I was making a tomato salad. And you're Gorgeous. gonna be putting all the tomatoes on top. Now I have some of the avocado. I get the spoon. 
I break the pieces of the avocado, I put it on top of the mayonnaise, I put it with the tomato. Now the tomato and the mayonnaise are talking to each other. The avocado is saying, hey, baby, what's going on? This is like a party. And you, yeah, it's a party. And then they, they say, but we want more people to have a great party. And then we had the feet of this tuna. You he know, they were not the best the tuna tree. on the planet Earth. I only and use Jose's tuna. Right tuna. It's fantastic. And now... We have some eggs that they've been broken, forgotten. The eggs are telling me, Jose, why are you forgotten me? I am a beautiful <laughs> egg. Love me. And so, yes, everybody should be loved. And then we bring the egg, we break it with the fingers like this, and all of the sudden, gorgeous. It is And I put it on top, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to call this the Rachel Ray. Yeah. Yay! Bravo! Gracias, Jose. And Jose, tell everybody where they can get more information about this campaign. Could you please? So, yeah, what you're going to be doing is this. Uh, starting, I think, tomorrow, you're going to be doing dishes, making sure that you make sure that no food is ever wasted. And then you're going to put a photo on, on social media, on, on, on Twitter, Instagram, and beyond. And you're going to do a hashtag, Fridge Hunters, and that way we're going to know that you are following us and by doing this and sharing with us how you are helping save the world because together we want to save one million meals from going to waste, you will earn a chance to Fridge Hunt with me one-on-one -on -one where I will go into your refrigerator and I will guide you of what Jose Andres will do with you. This is a great partnership with Hellman's. I really love it. And if together we can help feed America better and in the process make sure that no food ever again goes to waste, I think it's a win win for everybody. Raise your hand if you're going to take pictures of you saving some food and making a plate. I'm raising my hand, Jose. I'm going to do it tomorrow and I will hashtag it tomorrow for you, with you. I am always with you in my heart, too. I love and adore you. Mwah. I love you. I love you more. I love you more. Thank you, Jose. Thank you, my friend. When we come back, another surprise guest. I have no idea who it is. Hey, guys. You want free tickets to our show? to our website to be part of our live studio audience. feels like a brand new home because uh, we've renovated to make this space look a whole lot like upstate. Uh, so we have a kind of a housewarming. Um, we booked two guests today, unbeknownst to me. The first one was Jacques Pepin. I have no idea how to introduce this person, but here is our other housewarming guest. Come on out! <laughs> incredible photographer sincerely one of the most talented artists can you guys get a close-up on this this is one of Bob's masterworks look at that it's gorgeous Bob. the reason why I wanted you to have this photograph is because nothing says New York more than the Brooklyn Bridge Absolutely. right and to me Rachel Ray is New York <laughs> The coolest city and the coolest person. And Bob just gave me, uh, yesterday or in the middle of the night last night, you you, you gave me uh, a tip on a good horror movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, that's my buddy, that's my pal. It's Thank you again. Vampires on a plane, it was really scary. Blood Red Sky, that's what it's called. Awesome! <laughs> vampires on a plane, Vampires on a plane. It's like snakes on a plane, that. vampires on a plane. Sit. Hi, Rachel. Hi. Look how pretty, I mean, this is like your house. Doesn't it look like the country? Yeah. It's cool, isn't it? Yeah, it looks amazing. How are you, my love? I'm really good. You know, um, I am officially a New Yorker now. Mm. I left off. Right. Got a new place to it. 
too. I left Los Angeles. I am now in New York full time, and it's been uh, a big adjustment. Bob actually asked me to write a letter of recommendation for him. I'm like, are you serious? <laughs> Who would take me seriously enough? To <laughs> You had the best letter though. It was like, you'd be lucky to have him for a neighbor. I did too. I was like, you kick my friend or else. You know, it was like when I was crossing the bridge and I took that photo, I actually thought of you. Oh, how wonderful. I did. I was walking across and I was just like, you know, I'm, I'm so thankful to have her as a friend. And it's just like, there I was just on the Brooklyn Bridge and I was looking around. I'm like, this just says... New York to me so much, and you say New York to me, Thank and that's you. why I'm so glad to be here full time, so I get to eat more of your food. I'm really you, excited about we that. We need to cook together. Just pick a day, any day. Uh, well, I saw you making tacos <laughs> earlier. Those like little, like they sit up by themselves. <laughs> Aren't they cute? I was like, I love that. I'm like, do I? Is there a taco around? Uh, do there... you have any requests when we have our uh, dinner date here? Uh, you, want, you want a pasta? You want a fish? You ooh, want you know what? Seafood. I want a seafood. Okay. Bronzini with Bob. Oh my God, that sounds so good. Thank you, swear. Thank you, swear. I love you. I love you too. Uh, um, I, hey, we're here all month, so we should also go out to dinner. Too. I would like that. That would be fun. I would like that. It's so fun that we're allowed to go out to dinner again now. <laughs> What's so fun about eating with Rachel Ray is. We or it seems like we pretty much ordered everything on a menu because the we need menu. You know, and we just need to taste every single thing. <laughs> so of course I'm always just like this. What do you think? What do you think of this? You know, it's like you're you're you're, you're with the master there and you know, eating eating the master food. Master eater. Well, <laughs> I'm the master eater. You are. He looks fit and he works his tushy off in those hot yoga things. I would never go within a mile of. But. You can eat. Oh, we were uh, we were at her your house uh, yeah. recently eating dinner, and you made this pasta. It she gave me such a big, and this was like just one course, <laughs> right? And I was just like this huge bowl of pasta. I ate it all, and then ate a little bit of somebody else's. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a good cleaner upper. Okay, we have one more bit of business when we come back. It's a housewarming party, but we have a little something for our audience too. <laughs> tour with Bob as he shows off his New York City apartment. Hi, Rachel. So I'm a full-time New Yorker and I'm living here in Soho, so come on in. When I first saw this place, I walked in. I saw their windows not on one, not two, but three sides. I was like, oh yeah, this is the place for me. <laughs> I like that everything is open. Uh, I feel like there's a lot of room for my dogs to run around in. This building is like 1895 is when it was built. It was the Silk Exchange building. Super cool, fell in love. I mean, look at these floors. These are the original hardwood floors in here. Another thing that I loved uh, is all the wood that's around the, the windows. It just creates such a warm, I almost feel like I'm in a Parisian apartment when I'm in this place, and that's what I love. And my best friend, Christy Conaway, who is also my designer, she is the one. This is her creation. It's dark and it's moody and uh, it's, it, it's quirky, uh, and, and that's what I, I love so much about this place. She captured me in this place. I love it. All right, Rachel, so here's the kitchen. Literally got done, what, two days ago. It was just kind of like gray, and it was pretty, but it just wasn't me. And Christy was like, we're painting everything black. We redid the, um, the cabinets. She brought in all this, like, old pottery uh, and, and wood bowls that I loved. And then she got all this brass hardware, the brass and the black. I mean, look how it just pops. I feel like these lights are like jewelry hanging uh, off the ceiling. She wanted everything to be just completely cohesive, and it really works. My favorite part of the kitchen, my little bar cart. Don't look that my tequila bottles are almost empty. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> and then my bedroom. 
I think this canopy bed looks uh, really cool, like kind of very industrial, right? I think it really works. And I like that, like, the color palette that Christy did in here is just, like, really serene. So, I mean, I sleep very well in this room, and so do my dogs. All right, so let me show you something that I think is pretty cool. There's a couple of these throughout my whole apartment. See these little marble things? Uh, because this building is so old, and it was the Silk Exchange building, these are old sink basins, right? Again, it's just weird and character. The, there's so much character around this place, and... I just love them. Christy found this uh, way, this treatment. It's this Portola paint. It's called Roman clay. When you first walk in, it's so moody and dramatic. And she really did it. So you can really see it in my little office. My office isn't completely done yet. Uh, you can really see how pretty it is. And I think it plays off of the, uh, the wood really well. I'm real happy with this paint. All right, Rachel, thanks so much for coming over today. You know, I love having you here. You have an open invitation. I love you so much. I'll see you soon. When you were in school, if you don't have enough for the whole class, like if your teacher caught you like sneaking a snack or something, if you don't have enough for the whole class, you can't have that, you know, and they make you cough it over, whatever it was. Well, it would be really rude for us to have a housewarming show where I get surprises and to have our studio audience go home without any surprises. Well, that just would be all wrong. So, uh, luckily, everybody's going to get a gift. Do you want to see what it is? Am I really annoying you that I'm just sitting here tapping the box? Uh, I think this gift is so cool. I just said, did anybody ask for one for me? Okay. Everyone here is going home with the Vitamix One. The Vitamix One was created to celebrate their 100th anniversary. The One is a great way to get your health kick going. It's simple to use. It's great for smoothies and sauces and dips. And more importantly for everybody to know, it is valued at $249.95, which means they're super generous people over there. Thank you all so much for joining us today on a very special housewarming party here at my home away from home. It's, it's truly beautiful to be back here and see so many sweet faces with or without masks. Thank you guys for coming and for wearing the masks to be with us today. We'll see you, Alicia, everybody. Bye.